So let's start um, seated. And sitting toward the front of the chair so that we're not just leaning back into the chair, sitting with both feet flat on the ground. And with you know, a long back, almost as if you know, a string at the crown of the head is being gently tugged toward the ceiling. So just let the and let the back and the neck feel long. Bring your chin back just a little bit. And here we're, we're just doing some simple exercises that can help with balance and things that we can do throughout the day. Um, there are a couple of factors with balance challenging. One is just a, a sense of instability of feeling um, dizzy a little bit. Sometimes if we're walking or standing and we turn our head, there can be sort of a, a, a feeling of vertigo. The dizziness, we feel like we're spinning or vertigo, like it feels like the space around us is spinning. Oftentimes, one of the parts of the body that's affected with that are the inner ears. That's such an important part of, of balancing. So this first exercise is just slowly turning the head from side to side. And so here we're not, we're not doing this to loosen up and stretch the neck muscles so, so much as we are to engage the inner ears, these little, little canals in there. They sort of look like a, a busy highway intersection. We're just there's little crystals in there, like little sand, and we want everything to be able to move. Okay, and coming to stillness. And again, we're doing this slowly. We're not trying to initiate dizziness. And now up and down. And again, we're not focusing on anything, just letting the gaze be soft. Letting your face, your neck be relaxed, coming to stillness. And now extending your arm in front of you, raising your thumb so that your thumb is sort of in front of your nose. And now again, turning side to side. And keeping your attention on your thumb, looking at your thumb. So this time you are focusing and hold your, hold your tummy in. Just a, a good thing to do generally, even though right here we're not expending a whole lot of the energy, but if you hold your belly button back, you'll feel how all of the stomach muscles are engaging, coming to stillness. And now the up and down, still watching the thumb and again, doing this slowly. You know, if, if some of our balance Challenges have to do with feeling dizzy. If we do this slowly, we're not as likely to, to initiate that. And if all of that 
sand, if all those crystals are kind of clumped up together, if these, these slow movements can, can help loosen things up a little bit. Okay, coming to stillness. And now just looking up and opening the mouth wide. And then extending the chin and the lips as you close your mouth. Ooh. So sort of like saying, ooh. So just opening, closing the mouth. I can hear this in my inner ears. Uh, those muscles are kind of stretching the eustachian tubes. All right. And then just coming back, coming back to, to center. I'm just noticing how that feels. You may or may not notice anything. I just feel like things are sort of loosened up a little bit. And, and now, you know, crossing one leg over the other, you can just cross your legs at your knee if that's the easiest thing. You can put one leg on top of the other, or you can extend one leg in front of you. Now, whatever works best for your hips. But now we're going to be loosening up the ankles. So sort of the ears and the feet have a lot to do with balance. And so to begin with just circling the feet in one direction and then the other. And these are so far, these are exercises that you can do in bed before you ever even get out of bed in the morning. Okay, and now pointing and flexing the foot. And you can feel the muscles engaged. When you point your toe, you, know, you can feel the muscles in the calf, and in uh, by the shins, engaging in this pointing and flexing. So now point the foot, keep it pointed, and just point and flex the toes. Circling a couple more times, putting that foot down. And uh, if you do this every day, it can get boring. So you can also, instead of just pointing and flexing, you can write the alphabet. So now with the other foot, either extended in front of you, just crossing your legs, or letting the, the lower part of the leg rest on top of the other leg and circling the ankle. In one direction and then the other. Again, you know, if your foot is nearby, you can even just let your hand rest on the ankle and just feel all the movement, little bones in here. This is such a complicated part of the body. And now pointing and flexing. And then pointing the foot and just pointing and flexing the toes. And just noticing again, how that feels within the body and putting your feet down. And some people have some balance issues because they, they they can't feel that that all that well. There may be different reasons why the feet seem a little bit numb. So it's it's still a great idea to do these exercises. Sometimes we need to look at our feet in order to do them, but pretty soon the body remembers, even if we can't feel it. There's muscle memory there. 
Okay, now coming to standing and doing this slowly. Okay, so now just feeling these muscles in the legs, strengthening. So these are the different parts of the body that we really need to, to engage. Now I'm going to use the chair for support. And I, I always use a, a yoga mat when I'm using a chair because I have tile floors. So this keeps the chair from just sliding away from underneath me. Okay, so going up to the toes and back down to the heels, up to the toes and back down to the heels. And this is, this is an exercise where I can also use a walking stick or I can even use them both, depending on you know, how I'm feeling. This is a great exercise maybe to do when you're brushing your teeth. But here, you know, we're really strengthening those muscles in the front of the legs. Now, raising the toes. So we're raising the toes, just letting the weight come back onto our heels. Not necessarily, we're not trying to push our bottom back as if we're gonna sit. So we're not hinging. We're just picking up the toes and now going back and forth, toes, the heels. Toes, the heels. Great. And just, again, just strengthening these muscles, oftentimes with balance, you know, but especially if we're feeling like we're not very balanced, the gait can become sort of a shuffling gait you know, where we're not picking up our feet very much because... That, that feels unbalancing, but that also makes it very much more likely that we're going to trip on something. So here, a, a, a way to practice is just lifting up one foot with your foot flexed. So not lifting it up with the toe down, lifting it up with the foot flat, moving it forward a little bit, and then bringing it towards the ground, up and back. So and again, we want to get used to this, lifting the foot and having the foot be flexed, having the toes be up so that we're not as likely to trip on a stair, on a curb. And once again, if there is, if it's not that easy to feel the feet, if there's some numbness or neuropathy, to look at it, to look at the foot, to, to see how that is, how that, how that appears as our body gets used to that. Now I'm going to change feet. So lifting the other foot foot flexed, moving it forward a little bit and bringing it toward the floor. Now, if you have a stair or stairs in your house or a little stool, you can also practice this with the stool, not, not stepping up onto it so much, but bringing the foot up and putting it down with the foot still flat. So we get used to having the toe up. Okay, and then just coming, coming to stillness. So standing with the feet about hip width apart and long back. Bring your, your tuck your chin in a little bit. And now picking up one foot. Let your weight shift 
over the foot that's on the floor and just holding this foot up for a little bit. So here we're developing the strength in, to stand on one leg, putting that foot down. Now let your weight shift over the other foot and then picking, picking the other foot up and just pausing here. This is something that you can easily do if you're in the kitchen, in the bathroom, you know, someplace where you're standing still for a while and there's a counter there. So here we're working on the, the strength in the, the leg that we're, we've got our weight on and the balancing, okay? Putting that foot down, letting your weight shift and then picking the other foot up with your toe up. So we're not picking it up and just letting the foot flop there. And, you know, balancing as best you can, using the chair, using a counter, you know, and also, you know, practicing letting go a little bit. Maybe practice starting with your hand, but then you know, using a couple of fingers. You know, taking the hand off of this. And I mean, the nice thing about walking is that it's pretty much a controlled fall because we're we're just moving in whatever direction we're going. All right. And then just putting putting the foot down and kind of feeling that. And now, you know, just practicing walking to the side and picking your foot up. Now we don't have to pick it up a lot as we often do, you know, when in the exercise class, but just practicing taking these steps to the side picking the foot up off the ground because we want to, to get past a shuffling gait. And a lot of times it's the going sideways. Something happens or, you know, a little dog runs in my path or something and I, I have to respond. I want to be able to move to the side. Another reason to try to keep the knees a little bit soft so that we're not, the knees aren't locked. Another one that can be practiced easily with a walking stick. Again, these are very simple exercises, but surprisingly helpful. Now, another Another movement is going sideways, little steps with one foot going in front and behind. In the olden days, this was referred to as a grapevine. So I'm moving to the left, my right foot is, become, is coming behind my left foot and then in front. And then just going the other way, again, being conscientious about picking the toe up. So we're not dragging the foot. And with, you can do it with enough speed that we're continuing to move. Again, this this is sort of like the, the controlled fall aspect of walking. And we can start to feel the whole body sort of engaged, you know, so that the hips are moving a little bit. The more we can use the strength of our legs, the uh, flexibility in, in the hips and the ankles, better off we are. Because I you know for myself, so often when I do trip, 
I'm able to sort of, you know, dance out of it, bounce out of it a little bit on my feet instead of on my face. All right, and then coming to stillness. And one other very good exercise for the balance is putting, you can see, you know, if I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time, that becomes challenging for me because I can barely monotask. But putting one heel right in front of the toe of the other foot and then finding balance here. And what I find to be helpful is if both of my knees are soft and I feel the weight in my feet and I try to have it evenly distributed between both feet. And so holding on to something, having your hands to the side, and just doing this for, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And then coming back and letting everything kind of equilibrate. And then the other way. And then just letting, letting the knees bend, letting the weight no, seem to be equally distributed. And look, finding, finding a spot, either a, a spot in front of you or maybe a vertical line in front of you. It's something that's not moving. And letting that be the focus. Again, this is something that you can do throughout the day when you think of it. Coming back. And then one, one last exercise that, again, can be kind of surprisingly helpful is walking backwards. So we're not trying, we're not doing heel to toe. I'm just walking backwards, picking the foot up, putting the, the toe down first. And again, so often it's, you know, if we're trying to move, if we're trying to accommodate something that, that happened quickly, and that can be that can be a moment when we can lose our balance. If we have to change direction, we were going forward and then we suddenly have to move to the side or have to move back. We hear a sound and we turn to look. So we can practice these things slowly throughout the day then when we need them. that's more accessible. Okay, that's great. And so these are, you know, again, things that you can work on on your own. We'll, we'll continue talking about other exercises that we can do to help balance or working on these muscles that are, that are so important. Not only the the muscles in the lower legs that allow us to pick up our toes and our heels, but the muscles in our upper legs, you know, that allow us to stand up and allow us again to kind of recover if something happens. All right, thank you all for being here.